recently, our Delaware bred three-year-olds competed in rich finals. And we're gonna see who took home the winner's share in these big first state events. These four Delaware standard bred breeders fund races were hosted on Governor's Day at the Delaware State Fair, each with a purse of $110,000. First, we'll see those three-year-old Delaware bred male pacers in action in their rich DSBF final raced in honor of our late Delaware governor, Ruth Ann Minner, who was a huge supporter of our harness racing sport. They went by the half, 55 seconds on the way over toward the back stretch. Bad boy two, a length and a half lead now over Night Terror. Cards of Flying sits there in third, racing on the outside. Bad Lanes Casino up in the fourth, followed by Gateway Guy. Toward the inside, that sweetest swing off the rail is not he's missed. Trailing, continuing to trail to lighten his glory. They go by three quarters with Bad Boy 2 on top. In 124 and 150, they race on the final turn. Bad Boy 2, Night Terror out of 2 0, three wide. Moving quickly is Gateway Guy up after the lead as they come toward the top of the stretch. And Gateway Guy from the outside has gone up and taken the lead and crosses over. They turn for home. Gateway Guy, Night Terror trying to get up in the second. They come through the stretch. And Gateway Guy has got the lead by two lengths in mid stretch. Gateway Guy and Corey Kelly, and they're going to win it. Gateway Guy's in front, close for a second. Night Terror in a tight photo with Bad Boy 2 for the play spot in 153 and 3. Gateway Guy, owned and bred by Gateway Stable, came from behind to win the Governor Ruth Ann Minner by three lengths. The son of Del Marvelous, trained by Jeff Smith, picked up the victory in 153 and 3. Winning driver Corey Callahan joined assistant general manager Matt Sparacino for an interview. I'm joined by Corey Callahan, winning driver aboard Gateway Guy, who kicks off our Governor's Day program, winning the final for three-year-old Colts and Geldings here. Gateway Guy, an undefeated two-year-old, perfect seven for seven. You were his regular driver last year. Started the year a little bit slow there in the late closer and the winter at Dover, but really got it together now. Yeah, you know, uh, we were really disappointed with the, what happened there at Dover early. We, we couldn't really figure out what was going on with his gait. And um, turns out once that series was over, they treated him for EPM, and it totally turned him around. I know the, the first start here, I said, well, he's back now. So worked out. This horse has some really wicked gears, loves to come from off the pace, which he used in both of his elimination efforts. And, of course, again tonight, what were your thoughts going into the race? Obviously, the draw, not the best with post seven and the two main contenders to your inside. Yeah, definitely wasn't a good draw. Um, and I wasn't looking to get away seventh. <laughs> but it just kind of ended up that way. You know, once the gate sped up, it just kind of sped away from him. And, uh, you know, going to the quarter, I was like, geez, I am a long ways away from Toddy, the leader. And, um, you know, once he caught up there, at the, you know, just past the quarter, I went ahead and moved him here. I was hoping to be first up. But, um, you know, Russell come out in front of me and, I didn't want to be three wide through the turn, so I made a move up the backside and still ended up three wide in the turn. But he was the best horse in the race. You know, I just had to find a way to get into it, and, and he got it done. Corey Callahan, one of the good guys in our sport, kicks off our Governor's Day program with Gateway Guy. Corey, best of luck the rest of the night. Thanks. I need it. Next, let's check out those Philly Trotters in their $110,000 Delaware Standard Bread Breeders Fund Final as they raced in memory of Jack Walls. They went by the half in 59 seconds. They trot around the turn on the way over toward the back stretch. Miss Dubber leads by a length and a half over Liz. Miss won't be wrong. Coming to the outside, she is strong from third. Following will be last night's hit from fourth. Down inside, that's the gold rate. They go toward three quarters. Ms. DeBerg leads by a half length. Coming right up alongside now, she is strong. And she is strong from the outside. Goes up and gets a short lead. They go by three quarters. In 129 and two into the final turn. Getting clear now is she is strong. Opens up two lanes. Ms. DeBerg back to second left outside. Last night's hit toward the rail. Little Miss won't be wrong. Coming to the outside, three wide, Starlight Lounge, and they're at the top of the stretch, and opening up five, six, seven lanes. She is strong, she is strong with a huge lead coming toward the wire. She is strong, is in front. Holding second, Lil Must won't be wrong. Tight for third, give it the gold rate over Starlight Lounge in 158 and two. 
She is strong, owned by Jeff Clark, who is also the breeder of this filly, along with Vernon Cannon, lived up to her name with a seven length victory in 158 and two. The daughter of Anders Bluestone, trained by Art Stafford Jr., had Tim Tietrich in the driver's seat. And Matt Sparacino grabbed the Hall of Famer for some quotes after the race. You've driven this filly four times, been in the winner's circle with her three of those, get along with her well. Yeah, the first one I just didn't know her and uh, she made a little cold break, but uh, she's a really nice mare, man. She humps around this track really nice. She was really coming into this in good form at one three in a row, all on the front end. Change of tactics tonight with Mr. Berg, probably your main competition on the front end. Tell us about that. Yeah, he was going out of there enough, and he was pushing his, and he acted like he wanted to cut it, and he wasn't going to steal no big fraction. So I was I was happy to cover. Um, same way I raced her at Dover, I set off cover. When I moved her, she had a really good move, so I, I wasn't really too worried. Given this Philly success, both on the bigger track at Dover and here on the half, which do you think she favors, if any? I don't think it matters. You know, she's sure-footed as they come. You know, she, she wants to trot. Um, she's got a great attitude, and that's all you can ask for. Great to see Hall of Famer Tim Tietrich here on Governor's Day at the Delaware State Fair. Tim, congratulations. Thank you very much. Moving on, we'll take a look at our DSBF sophomore pacing fillies in action. Racing in memory of Ben Stafford, Jr. They went by the half in 58 and 1 fifth. They race around the turn on the way over toward the back stretch. Leading away is Misty Coast by two lanes. No gel Nikki. Direct miss coming to the outside. All by Kim Secret Search. Cover Stripes races on the outside toward the rail. Chatty Kathleen. Field continues up the back stretch toward three quarters. And Misty Coast. Misty Coast has the lead. Direct missed up in the second. No gel Nikki back to third. Outside Kim Secret Search. Fall by Killer Stripes. Three quarters in 127 and 1. They make their way around the final turn. Misty Coast, a two length lead. Taking over second now. Direct miss. No gel Nikki drops back. Kim Secret Search up into third. They straighten away now, and Misty Coast turns home on top. It's Misty Coast. Direct Miss Race is second. They come toward the finish, and Misty Coast draws away. Misty Coast. Then it's going to be Direct Miss, followed by Kim Secret Search. No jail. Nikki is fourth. A troubled color stripes in 155 and two. Misty Coast, owned and bred by Steve Messick, went from gate to wire with a three length victory in 155 and two. The daughter of Powerful Mist is conditioned by Les Givens, and driving the pacing lass was Art Stafford Jr., who is the cousin of Ben Stafford Jr., the late horseman this race was named for. Art, you've been aboard this filly uh, most of her recent starts. This is her 10th win and just 16 starts. She likes to win. She likes to race, she's a nice filly to drive, and uh, she puts you in a good spot all the time. Tell us about tonight. Obviously, you drew into a great spot, post two, in between two horses who look like your main competition in the one, Hold My Wine, and the four killer stripes. You got tangled up there early in the mile. Did you feel pretty good after that happened, and did you know, know that they were so far back? I knew they'd both run, and uh, it probably put me in a good spot for the long run. You've been behind some good pacing fillies over the years. This filly hadn't raced in a few weeks. Were you at all concerned, or were you confident less out of ready? After the last race, I was pretty confident in her. Um, she's pretty solid most of the mile. Art Stafford Jr., congratulations. Winning driver aboard Misty Coast in the Ben Stafford Memorial. Finally, let's see the sophomore Delaware Standard Bread Breeders Fund Final for Male Trotters, named in memory of Hal Belote. They went by the half 59 and 3 fifths. They make their way into the clubhouse turn on the way toward the back stretch, Paleface. Kodak Black races up on the outside to join Paleface. Back to third, he spooks, he scores. Perfect 20 tries to follow from fourth. Out comes I Got It Made toward the rail, that's Ready Fox. They're midway up the back stretch on the way toward three quarters. And from the outside, Kodak Black goes by, gets the lead, Paleface drops back. Perfect 20 takes over a second, they go by three quarters. In 129 and 150 into the final turn, Kodak Black, Perfect 20 on the outside, up into second. Pale face back to third. I got it made. There. They come toward the top of the stretch now. Ready to turn for home. And Kodak Black opens up three lanes. Kodak Black. Perfect 20 is racing in second. Coming through the stretch. Kodak Black with a three length lead. Coming toward the wire. Then comes Perfect 20 in second. They're at the finish. And Kodak Black wins it easily. Then it's going to be Perfect 20 
and he spooks, he scores back to fourth pale face in 158-2. Kodak Black. Owned by George T. Jr., David Collins, and Lakaya Tichi, was the heavy one to nine favorite and certainly performed like the very best with his impressive five length win. The son of Kodak Lindy, trained by Clyde Francis, crossed the finish line in 158 and 2. Matt Spirocino spoke with a breeder and co owner, George T. Jr., after the big victory. George, going into this race, obviously the horse won the two eliminations by a combined 13 lengths. He was the big favorite, but as we know, anything can happen going for 100,000, particularly with a young trotter. Yeah, last year he um, looked like he had the $100,000 final all covered up, and he, he started running about 20 foot for the wire, so you can't count until it finished. So. Obviously, you won so many big races over your Hall of Fame career. Is it extra special given the family ties to this one, having owning the dam, the sire as a horse that your sister campaigned, uh, Kodak Lindy, does that make it just a little bit more special? Yeah, it's a lot more fun for me, but the other money was better, but this is fun. Kodak Black, much the best in the $100,000 final. Are they plans just to keep them in state the rest of the season? Yeah, just start back at Dover. Congratulations, George Teague and all of Team Teague with Kodak Black. Post time would like to congratulate our three-year-old Delaware Standard Bread Breeders Fund final winners and all of their connections. And coming up this October at Harrington Raceway, we'll see the rich finals for our two-year-olds. And I'll make sure to keep you posted about those exciting events.